Hi, I'm the Full Metal Narcissist, and I hate Ruby, and I've been very vocal about that. I have written five different pieces on my blog about Ruby, and last year, around the fall, I posted reaction videos of myself watching the first four episodes of Season 2. And despite having the least effort put into them, those four React videos had far more actual reaction from people than my written work did. I got a lot of comments. Very negative comments, but I get that. I mean, you put yourself out there, that's what happens. I'm shitting all over something you love. I do the same thing you're doing. I get that. Uh, I've found a few of the comments worth commenting on, so I did. Although the one I was the most offended by apparently didn't have a reply button under it. I'm not sure how that works. Whatever. But recently, I had a very, very long series of comments that were actually kind of constructive. First of all, this commenter suggested that because I'm not an animator, I shouldn't criticize people's animation. Which makes sense. That's not my field of expertise. That's not what I do. Siskel and Ebert, they're not filmmakers. Can you imagine what it would be like if they spent their entire careers criticizing movies? How pretentious would that be? Or if you go to a restaurant and you have a cheeseburger, it makes you puke for a week. Who are you to criticize the chef when you're not a chef? Uh, ignorant comment aside, this commenter said one thing that actually kind of got me going. They said that instead of focusing on the animation, which I've been doing, instead of focusing on the jokes or the designs, I should focus on the story and plot of Ruby, which I'm ashamed to admit I've kind of neglected to do. I've done blow by blow of the story, but I never really talked about what at all is actually going on in Ruby. I never sat down and took a hard look at what makes this story around. What is at its core? What's the story? What's the plot? And so, just to cover all my bases, I'm going to go over the story of Ruby. You ready? Ruby is the story of a spunky teenager with a short attention span, who enrolls in a school to teach people how to fight, to become warriors of some sort. She makes several bad first impressions after pretty much just one mission. She is placed in a group that she didn't consciously choose to be in. And that group, the chosen group, if you will, quickly becomes the most important group on campus, our focal point. They go on a lot of missions, wind up dealing with a lot of evil villains, most of these are on behalf of the school. And each of them have their own unique fighting style, their own weapons, and are supporting either their clans or their families. It's Naruto. It's, it's fucking Naruto. Y you know that, that show, Ruby? It's Naruto. Alright? Seriously, take Naruto. Just take Naruto. Swap out the ninjas in teams of three for hunters in teams of four. Make one of them a Super Saiyan and give them a Cowboy Bebop dog that can fit inside of a Pringles can. What do you get? You get fucking Ruby, that's what you get. And b before anyone starts telling me that it's not Naruto, because there are a lot of other differences, I get that. I know, it's not carbon copy. It's a different setting, they have different villains. It's clearly more focused on female characters. I get that, there are differences, but guess what? That's how ripoffs work, it's never a carbon copy. They copy the bones of the plot, a few specific details that made the show successful, and they go from there. Uh, to prove my point, just because Jake Sully rides on the back of a blue dragon doesn't make Avatar any less a ripoff of Pocahontas and Dances with Wolves. It's pretty much the same shit. Dances with Wolves, did not have mecha fighting in it, although that would have made it more awesome. Pocahontas did not take place on another planet. Everyone knows Pocahontas took place in an alternate dimension where Pocahontas was not 12 years old and John Smith was not a deplorable asshole pedophile. But that's my point. 
A ripoff is not a carbon copy. There are similarities, hard similarities, and there are also a lot of differences. Ruby is a ripoff of Naruto. That's the story, that's the plot. I'm skipping a lot of the lore and the world building because it didn't make a whole lot of sense. They never got around to exploring or explaining all of it. But yeah, Ruby, Naruto. But no, you know what? No. Naruto is better than Ruby. And don't get me wrong, Naruto sucks. I'm not, I'm not arguing that fact. Naruto sucks. But at least the character Naruto wants something. At least he has a goal. At least he has an ambition. He wants to be the next Hokage. Because he has gone through a lot of discrimination in his life. He has endured ostracism from, every, from pretty much everyone in the village because of that monster he's got inside of him. He wants to prove how good he is by reaching the top. He wants to be the Hokage. The main secondary character, Sasuke, he wants to avenge his family by killing his older brother. Even Sakura... Okay, fuck it, forget Sakura. Now, I'm not gonna say they're good characters, overall. But there is depth to them. There is drive to them. But those two characters... Those two characters... There is a want there. There is a drive. There is some degree of complexity. What does Ruby Rose want? Like, she states twice what she wants. The first one she says she wants to be a normal girl with normal knees. It's a punchline to some joke, whatever. And she wants to be a huntress. Or whatever they call them. I haven't seen the show in a while. That's not the worst thing to want. Except... Guess what? Everybody at that school wants to be exactly what she wants to be. Everybody has that goal. What makes her so special? I mean, her teammates are more interesting than her. Blake is an interesting character. She has a tragic and pretty compelling backstory. Weiss, at the very least, has something to prove. Yang pretty much exists just to be proud of her sister. Whatever. The only thing that makes Ruby special, the character, not the show, the character of Ruby, the only thing that makes her special is the forced, contrived, manufactured, awkward charm of her character. She's not a good main character. If you find her design cool, good, you're supposed to. But once again, drawing a comparison to Naruto, Naruto hits pretty much the same overall premise. That this team, these characters, they're the focal point of the story. They're the main team. They're the important team. Naruto does that too with its trio. However long they stick together, whatever. But in Naruto, because you have those backstories, because you have some sense of chosenness with the characters, you know why they're the main characters. Honestly, if you were to exchange the show Ruby with a show called Juniper that focused on the other four characters, I'm having trouble figuring out why that would be not as interesting or compelling a show. Spend more time with them than with Ruby and her team, and bam, you've got new main characters. There is nothing special about Ruby or her team, or their arcs. I mean, okay, to be fair, I found her relationship with Weiss to be pretty funny. But yeah, they got nothing. As a matter of fact, I will throw it on this challenge now, because I have a serious question. If anybody can comment on this video and tell me why we couldn't have had a show called Juniper that followed John and his friends instead of a show called Ruby. I don't mean appeal... I don't mean design or marketing. I don't mean, you know, these characters will get more viewers. I mean, practically, in terms of importance, in terms of significance to the plot. Why couldn't Team Juniper have replaced Team Ruby? If you can do that and convince me that Team Ruby is special enough to be the main team of the series, 
I'll I'll mail you a plate of CG cookies. Maybe I might have to wait for the technology to exist. <sighs> I'm the Full Metal Narcissist, and you're welcome.